Hey everybody, Rob Maurer here, and today we're talking a little bit about Tesla's ability to attract talent. We have a related story on that from Berlin, Model Y sales in California, and some news from BMW and Rivian. All right, so we'll start off with talent, and this isn't the first time we've talked about a story like this, but Universum is out with their most attractive employers in the United States based on surveying over 235,000 students, that's worldwide, about which companies they would like to eventually work for. As Tesla has done in years past, they've scored incredibly well in the 2020 results, and they have actually taken over the first spot in terms of most attractive employers for engineering students in the United States, interestingly enough, taking that first spot away from SpaceX. So Tesla has risen to number one, SpaceX has only fallen back to number two. Universum divides the responses into five areas of study, business, engineering, computer science, natural sciences, and then humanities slash liberal arts slash education. Tesla finished in the top 25 for each of these categories, and they actually moved up in all but one from the 2019 rankings. So for business in 2019, Tesla ranked 12th. For 2020, they've jumped up to 8th there. Engineering, as we talked about, jumped up one spot from 2nd to 1st. Computer science, one spot from 6th to 5th. Natural sciences, one spot from 16th to 15th. And then humanities, liberal arts, and education stayed at 23. Just for fun, if we want to take a look here at SpaceX too, they also improved across categories, but actually fell a little bit in natural sciences. In business, they jumped from 33rd up to 23rd, so a big 10 spot increase there. Engineering fell back to second. Computer sciences, they stayed at seventh, so just behind Tesla there. Natural sciences, they're a bit above Tesla at 14th, though that is down a little bit from last year's 10 ranking. And then humanities, liberal arts, and education, they jumped up from 50th to 40th. So across the board here, across categories, both Tesla and SpaceX, I think really strong results and mostly improving year over year. And I think for Tesla, they'd be happy with where they're scoring the best in engineering and computer science. I think natural sciences, we could see a big increase in that next year as a result of everything that Tesla has talked about on the battery front at Battery Day and as a result of moving further and further down the supply chain. So hopefully in a year from now, when we get these results again, I can remember to look at that. The other element of this report that I find really interesting is the spread between Tesla and other automakers. For example, if we look at the computer science category, Tesla comes in at fifth. The second ranked automaker isn't until 51, and that's BMW. So clearly these students are smart enough to see Tesla as a technology company, and they're really not categorizing any of the other automakers in that same way. The closest to Tesla I think you get would be Uber at 35, Lyft at 39. And other than that, I mean, you have Google at number one, Apple at number two, Intel at 15 with, obviously they have Mobileye, Samsung, and Nvidia at 20 and 21. But Tesla clearly separate from the other automakers. We see a similar spread in the business category as well. Tesla at eight with the second ranked automaker not until 41, which is again BMW. For natural sciences, even a more stark difference there, Tesla at 15. The second ranked automaker isn't until 80. That's actually Rolls Royce, weirdly enough. Then BMW comes in third at 86. And then in the other category, you've got Tesla at 23. Second would be BMW at 72. Finally, the engineering rankings are a bit closer. I don't think that's too surprising. Tesla at number one, and then Ford coming in second at number 12. So again, these are results from students in the United States, but this is a worldwide survey. So Universum also presents those worldwide results. For worldwide, they only break it down to business and then engineering slash IT. But what's super interesting and confusing here is that Tesla doesn't actually rank in the top 50 in either of those categories worldwide. Maybe a few years ago that would have made more sense, but Tesla has a pretty large global reach at this point. So I don't understand how they could be number one for engineering students in the United States and not even be in the top 50 worldwide, especially when you have Ford coming in at number 15, General Motors coming in at number 18, and obviously the predominance of their strength would presumably be in the US. So I really just don't understand that. And back in early October, when Universum released the worldwide results, they hadn't yet released the US numbers, but I actually had looked into it at the time and thought it was weird that Tesla was missing because of their scores in 2019. So I asked them a couple of times about that around that time, but I never heard back from them. With this report now published again today, I have reached out again. I don't know if the methodology is changing or if there's a weird regional skew in terms of their survey respondents, but it definitely seems odd to me. So I don't know, hopefully we'll hear back from them. All right, staying on the topic of talent, but moving away from Universum, we have an interesting story that has developed over the last couple of days coming out of Germany. There are reports that the plant manager for Daimler's Berlin and Hamburg factories has requested to retire early at the end of 2020. What makes this interesting and relevant to Tesla is that according to the IG Metal Union, which represents workers at these factories, 
This decision is because this manager is going to shift over to Tesla and be the manager at Giga Berlin. This has stirred up some unrest from the union, and Representative Jan Otto has said that employees at the plant in Berlin are irritated and that it's completely unacceptable for Tesla to have a new plant that's less than 50 kilometers away from that Mercedes plant, adding thousands of jobs while, quote, at the same time, the Daimler management can think of nothing more than to shy away from the future and set up its oldest manufacturing plant here to want to close. That is devastating for Germany's premium car brand, end quote. So IG Metal was organizing a protest that was actually scheduled to happen today. I haven't heard anything on that recently, but Yanato says, quote, We will make it clear that we see the change in the plant manager as treason. It is questionable whether we have not been lied to all the last time, end quote. Guessing that end part probably translates better to for a while or something like that. So probably not the best sign there for Daimler to have the representation for their employees calling them out for shying away from the future, which is, I think, kind of the drum that we've all been beating here for a while now. Sticking here with German automakers for a minute, we heard yesterday from BMW, which has given us what they call a first look at the BMW iX. This would be sort of a crossover SUV type of vehicle that slots into the Model Y category, probably most similar to an X5 or an X6 from BMW. And while they didn't share everything, most notably price, they did give us a little bit of information on the specs of the vehicle. So it'll have a 0 to 60, or rather 0 to 62, 0 to 100 kilometers per hour in under 5.0 seconds and a range over 600 kilometers or 373 miles, but that is on the WLTP test cycle. The EPA rating will be lower. BMW says, quote, that equates to more than 300 miles according to the EPA's FTP 75 test procedure, end quote. Ah, so pretty sneaky here, BMW. If we look at what the FTP 75 test cycle is, that's actually just the city portion of the EPA test, where normally this would be reported on the combined cycle, which is a blend of the city results as well as the highway test. So I have to imagine the reason that BMW specified the FTP 75 test procedure here is because the combined number is probably not over 300 miles. In general, electric vehicles are more efficient in city driving situations rather than on the highway. On the highway, you have so much air resistance. So if we look at the Model Y, for example, it scores a 117 miles per gallon equivalent on the highway test cycle and 131 miles per gallon equivalent on the city cycle. So 12% more efficient on the city cycle that BMW is referring to here than on the highway. And then again, the combined number is a blend of those two results. For the Model Y, the city efficiency is about 5% higher than the combined result. The other couple of tidbits that BMW gives us here that can be helpful for us figuring out what the actual range is going to be is they say that the gross energy content is more than 100 kilowatt hours and that it uses less than 21 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers on the WLTP test cycle. So if we convert that over to miles, that's less than 34 kilowatt hours per 100 miles on WLTP. Again, the WLTP rating they're saying should be above 373 miles. So if it's using less than 34 kilowatt hours per 100 miles, that would be a 126 kilowatt hour pack. I don't think they're going to be that high. And I think on the EPA test cycle, the efficiency is going to be even lower than that 34 kilowatt hours per 100 miles. Even if it's not, Best case scenario here for BMW, you still need to add that 5% to go from city to combined. So best case, most efficient case here, you're looking at probably 35 and a half kilowatt hours per 100 miles compared to the Model Y at 27 kilowatt hours per 100 miles. So that would make the BMW iX about 31% less efficient than the Model Y. And again, that's a generous assumption, I believe. If we use the same ratio for the Model Y's highway results versus the Model Y's city results, and we apply that to the BMW iX, you're maybe looking at a highway test result of around 265 miles or 425 kilometers based on that 300 mile number on the city test cycle. And then maybe you're looking at a combined rating in the 280 mile range or about 450 kilometers. And again, that would be being achieved with a larger than 100 kilowatt hour pack. This looks incredibly inefficient. That's taking 30 or 40% more energy to move a mile than the Model Y does. And that's the Model Y of today. The BMW iX isn't supposed to start production until at least a year from now. So really it's gonna have to compete with a newer, cheaper, more efficient, higher range Model Y that is being produced in volume already in BMW's home turf in Germany. Good luck. People better really, really like that interior, I guess, because otherwise this looks wholly uncompetitive. All right, next up here, let's shift back to the United States. We have some interesting information that has been published by the California New Car Dealers Association. 
which breaks down California vehicle registrations in Q3. So to preface this a little bit, registrations should correlate well with sales, but not perfectly. There can be time delays that cause discrepancies, and that can be exacerbated by the coronavirus situation. But we do get some interesting insight into Tesla's sales in California. I do want to start with the overall electric vehicle market, though. Here we can see that in 2019, the electric vehicle market, in terms of market share, in California was about 5.1%. That was up from 4.6% in 2018, and we had seen a pretty big jump in 2018, likely due to the Model 3, from 2.7% in 2017. So, so far year to date, that EV market share has increased to 6.1% and that's just pure electric vehicles. The other interesting thing here is plug-in hybrids. The market share there has actually declined both of the last two years. So it was 3% in 2018, 2.5% two in 2019, and 1.8% in 2020. So we're gonna come back to BMW here, and I think someone should just forward that along to them and maybe point out that the power of choice strategy might be a bit suboptimal. As for Tesla registrations, they categorize the Model 3 in the near luxury car category. So, so far year to date, there have been 31,500 Model 3 registrations in California. That's a 44% market share of that near luxury category. Second place is the BMW 3 Series at about 7,300 registrations or 10%. So it's been that way for a while in that category in California. The cool thing here is that the Model Y is now showing up in this report under the luxury compact SUV category. And through September, there had been about 9,200 registrations of the Model Y that takes 16.2% share of that category and is in first place with the Lexus NX coming in second at about 8,400. Obviously, we would expect that lead to continue to grow. I don't know that that can give us a whole lot of insight into how much actual Model Y production we have seen so far. Again, Tesla doesn't actually break that down for us, but if we can remember to come back to this report after Q4, this might be a useful piece of data to help us kind of figure some of that stuff out. All right, last quick thing for today, as we talked about earlier this week, there had been a bit of a leak that Rivian would be unlocking their design studio on November 16th, that's Monday. They have now confirmed that formally, so that'll go live for pre-order holders on November 16th, and then for general access on November 23rd. They've also updated their website if you wanna check that out. They've showed off a lot of their colors, and they've announced that US deliveries for the truck will start in June of 2021, and the SUV in August of 2021. So check that out. Otherwise, we will revisit the topic on Monday. That'll wrap it up for today, though. As always, thank you for listening. Don't forget to subscribe and sign up for notifications. Make sure you're following me on Twitter at Tesla Podcast. And I'll see you tomorrow for the Friday, November 13th episode of Tesla Daily. Thank you.